Thank you for the invitation. I'm really excited to be here because for the next phases of our autonomous driving activities and also all the assistance systems, we need a good understanding to make the right decisions. And I think the best thing to do in such a situation is always is talk to Amnon. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, thank you, Robert. You know, we have been working for so many years together and you know, I've been doing great things with, uh, with Volkswagen over, over, over the years. You know, when, when you talk about you know, autonomous driving and driving assist, driving assist has, you know, a lot to go. There's lots of evolution for driving assist yeah. that will give lots of value to, yes. uh, to customers. Yeah. And then you see that with the, with the ID4, the Travel Assist 2.4, yeah. 2.5, is, is really adding, you know, a, a very unique element, which is now cloud-based assistance. You know, people think about cloud is only over-the-air updates. So I have a new software to, to push to the car, I need a cloud. Mm -hmm. But here we're doing something together. Actually, we have been starting working on it back in 2017. I think well, even, even in 16, 16 we even started 16, the yeah, first discussions. 16, yeah, yeah. And, and now we see it really in, in, yeah. in, in production. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, you know, lots and lots of you know, data about, uh, about the world is injected to the driving assist. So even yeah. if you drive in an area that you don't see lane marks, the cloud knows about it yeah. and you know, helps the, the, the lane centering. Oh, yeah. It's great. You know, I think here you can feel that it's RAM data because, you know, we're not in the middle of the lane, we're not to the right, we're just doing a natural pass now. And it's continuously on. It's continuously on, it's working really well. So I think the next step of, of you now using RAM is to go, is to start using traffic lights. So today, today RAM is only the drivable path, yeah. it's using traffic light information. Then we have data about the uh, road priority, who has priority over what, and then it, it creates a very, very smooth control, you know, in areas where you have splits and merges, <laughs> so that you know who has priority. Apropos the, the right partner, this, the last, uh, you know, 500 meters was very, very impressive. You know, we were yeah. in an urban yeah, setting, I agree. and I agree. You know, it was I agree. continuously yeah. on. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's great, though, for the car is doing the job, basically. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's your car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great route. When do you think it would be possible to also update your semantic, the learning algorithms of the camera? Because you know, your knowledge is improving continuously, basically. Now with each and every corner case you are evaluating, you get new data and, and you get better cameras, so even, even for the NCAP systems. So do you think it will be possible at some stage that we even can update the AI part of the camera? I, th I think that the AI part has, has two parts. Right? There is one which is, uh, let, let's call it the pattern recognition. Yes. You now the algorithms for knowing that there is a you know, road user, you know, a horse, a car, a, you know, a motorcyclist yeah. and so forth. And then there's the part that understands more and more complex uh, surrounding. You know, there's a traffic light and there are several drive drivable paths. Which drivable path is associated with each traffic light? And when you go into a complex, uh, you know, junction, you know, which, which pedestrian zone is relevant to which traffic light, to which drivable path? And sometimes it becomes difficult for the onboard processing to really understand in a fraction of a second what, what's going on there. Uh, and, and this is the second part of the AI, which you can do it with, through swarm uh, the cloud processing. Why not sending pictures, snippets of, uh, of data, and all of this is pieced in the cloud, and that can be updated at a very, very high uh, frequency. But it remains cloud knowledge then? It's cloud knowledge. Okay. And in cloud, the, the, the beauty of the cloud is you have much more processing uh, power. So for example, you know, in, in the ID4, we're talking about 2.5 kilometers of road in, in, in Europe. 2.5 million kilometers. kilometers. Yeah. Yeah. And it takes us a week to, uh, to build a map. It takes us a week. So we take all this swarm data, it takes us uh, a week, and there's no reason, you know, with, with the advancement of computing, that will not take us a day. And then later it will take us, you know, half a day. Yeah. So 
everything that happens in the world can then be updated and streamed to uh, stream to cars. If you compare your work with, with us and you're working with other OEMs and uh, we set up for the ID3 entirely new architecture now, which took us time to get it to get it working, but now we are able to really update and, and uh, send uh, actualized algorithms and data to the car. Are you happy with how we, let's say, how we can work together now? What I would like to say in terms of our relationship, we have been doing things that are very, very innovative. For example, this swarm data, you know, uh, Mobileye and Volkswagen were the first. The first, we talked about 2016, it's very, very innovative. But I think there's lots more to, uh, lots more to do. I fully agree. And with the new setup, not that we, generate, we, we, we create data by the day and we can update by I don't know, every other week or every, every, every month or so, I think this uh, learning loop can be extremely fast. You know? And I think that, that could be a big advantage. And uh, still not uh, talking about level three or four, but level two systems can be improved a lot. So I think it's, uh, it looks really promising. Okay? Very good.